Coming up next year on Ghana Tonight, the Attorney General disagrees with the Speaker of Parliament's decision declaring the four parliamentary seats vacant and supporting the position of Alexander Peño Markin in the Supreme Court case. We have got the details for you here on Ghana Tonight. And Dennis Pod Barry Wadam, Esquire, is joining us right now. Dennis. What's, what's the Attorney General saying in this one? Well, so Alfred, you recall that on Friday, when the Supreme Court gave its ruling um, on that application by Alexander Fenyo Makin mm. as to the stay of execution of the Speaker's ruling, the Supreme Court, in granting that stay, gave three orders. One was to the effect that the ruling be stayed or suspended till the pending the final determination of the case. Mm -hmm. Two was for the said MPs to be recognized as members of parliament. And then finally, was that for parties to file their statements of case within seven days. So the Attorney General has just filed his statement of case, being the second defendant in the case. Right. So it means that the, keep, the case is shaping up well and nice. And if parties are, all parties are able to file their processes within the seven days, um, the coming days, we should be heading towards hearing. But of course, the Attorney General has been making arguments as to why he believes that the MPs should not, um, I mean, the seats should not be declared vacant. What's this been saying? Well, so the Attorney General simply says that by virtue of an MP filing to contest an upcoming election, that in itself does not um, lead to the vacation of the case. Mm. For him, he makes the case that every parliament has a fixed term. So every parliament has a lifespan of four years. And that when you are in that particular parliament, and you express an intention or an interest to contest for an election in the next parliament, that in itself should not be a ground for you to vacate your seat. This is an argument that you have heard before. Mm -hmm. So he makes reference to the, to the constitution and says that he, dis, he does not think that the framers of the constitution intended to create a vacancy of a seat of an MP that if the current term of parliament, the MP leaves the party of which he was a member at the time of election to join another party or seeks to remain in parliament as an independent candidate. Mm -hmm. So essentially saying that, so even if these MPs, for whatever reason, have filed nominations or have expressed interest to contest, either as independent candidates, if they came on the ticket of a party, or if an, uh, on the ticket of one party and you want to go as an independent candidate, that should not be grounds for the declaration of that seat as a vacant one. Right. He goes on to also talk about the filing of nominations by sitting MPs to contest future parliamentary elections. So you recall, you, you, you would notice that he keeps making reference to future parliamentary elections mm. to the effect that what these MPs have done or are alleged to have done does not apply to their being in this particular eighth parliament. Right. It applies to the ninth parliament. Because before coming to this, the AG has set the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court to hear this matter mm. because he believes that the the provision in question has been subjected to multiple interpretations and there's ambiguity for that reason. The Supreme Court is the um, right forum for this particular one. But Alfred, if you recall, the <clears throat> argument that Attorney General is making about this conduct having to do with the next parliament is one that the man who started this litigation process, uh, Alexander Fenyo Makin, mm -hmm. majority leader. Yes. Well, that's as he filed this. He filed in his capacity as majority leader. Indeed. So he also made that particular argument. And I mean, part of the argument he makes is what we see on the screen now, where he tries to interpret it to say that the phrase, and that is coming from Article um, 97, 1 each, that mm -hmm. if he leaves the party on which he was a member at the time of his election to parliament and Quote, to join another party or six to remain in parliament, as found in Article 97 1H of the 1992 Constitution, refers to the current parliament, emphasis on the current parliament, of which the affected member of parliament is a member, and not the future parliament as it is. So the bottom line is that both um, the majority leader, or Alexander Fenyo Makin in this case, mm -hmm. and then the AG are basically making the same point. However, the speaker disagrees. And that was why, in his ruling, that led to the declaration of the seats vacant. Yes. He did explain that, in his view, when you look at that particular provision, it, if it were to apply to future parliaments, they would be rendered superfluous. Indeed. By the time the next parliament is constituted, any member of parliament who has defected or switched political, political allegiance 
during the current parliament will no longer be in violation of this provision. They will start the next session aligned with their new party or as an independent candidate. Thus, there will be no defection and the violation will be wiped clean. Mm -hmm. Essentially, the Speaker of Parliament is saying that the argument about that conduct being futuristic mm -hmm. does not hold. Right. Because if that were allowed to hold, it means that by the time you even get there, the people would have been properly aligned and there would not be any violation of the article. So clearly, there's some confusion as to what the, the, the interpretation of this provision is. Yes. And that is the basis on which the Attorney General asserts the jurisdiction of the Supreme, Supreme Court, Court. Um, citing Articles 2.1 and then Articles 131 of the 1990 Constitution, having given the Supreme Court the, um, that jurisdiction to interpret that particular provision. Dennis, Pope Wadam, Squire, thank you. Always a pleasure being here, Alfred. Indeed. So live here on Ghana tonight. And it's on the back of this that, thankfully, we, we bring in Justice William Atuguba, retired. He's a former Justice of the Supreme Court of the Republic of Ghana. I thank you so much for joining us, sir. Good evening to you. Uh, thank you. Uh, to, to me, this says I don't like them. Just uh, brothers, just talk. Uh, say, sir, sir, sir. But I think you are used to them, but to me, they are not. <laughs> I don't enjoy them. <laughs> I mean, important thing is a human being. What, uh, what you can do to help society. That's it. It's not titles and this sort of. We are all human beings. <laughs> My relations. That's an important thing. Okay. Indeed. Well, you've earned it, but um, I thank you. Uh, very much for staying up to join us here on Ghana tonight. And you, you saw my colleague run through what the latest is with this matter. You have followed this case right from last week, Tuesday, when the speaker was petitioned. And then after the 48 hours reflection, he gave a reasoned ruling on Thursday. The NPP caucus led by the leader went to the Supreme Court uh, to seek to have the speaker's decision, as was communicated last week, Thursday, in declaring these four seats vacant set aside. I mean, having followed all of this, what's your own view about how events have played out in this case? Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> the speaker did not, uh, he referred to the fact that um, he had been served with uh, uh, court order uh, from the Supreme Court. Uh, it was one of the factors that uh, he took into account in uh, adjourning matters indefinitely. Uh, uh, so the, the effect of it uh, is that uh, uh, there's, I mean, Parliament is not uh, in session is not um, operating for some time. I mean, until it reconvenes uh, for active work. That's what <laughs> it means. I see. And as we saw today, indeed, uh, he adjourning parliament indefinitely. Uh, some right from Tuesday and, and what happened on Friday, some have over the right from Friday to this moment questioned the Supreme Court's jurisdiction in getting into this matter and the form and nature of this, you know the, the original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. Will that concern be one that you would share, that the Supreme Court's jurisdiction was invoked wrongly in this case? Well, um, uh, as far as I'm concerned, this uh, Vacation of seat matter is specifically dealt with in Article 99. Uh, I think you know that, isn't it? 90. Uh, uh, 99. 97. Nine, uh, nine, no, 99. It deals with vacation of office, uh, among other things. Yeah. But 99 yeah. uh, is as follows. That's what the article says. The High Court shall have jurisdiction to hear and determine any question 
whether a person has been validly elected as a member of parliament or the seat of a member has become vacant or a person has been validly elected as a speaker of parliament or having been so elected as vacated office of speaker. A person aggrieved by the determination of the High Court under this article may appeal to the Court of Appeal. Well, that's another interesting dimension. Uh, so, the question involved here is one relating to vacation of uh, the, the seats of the four MPs involved. Uh, so, it's a matter for the High Court, uh, not for the Supreme Court. Yeah, so to that extent, uh, invoking the Supreme Court over this matter is wrong. They don't, they don't have original jurisdiction. You see, original jurisdiction means invoking the court at first instance. That's original. But they have referred jurisdiction in the sense that uh, from even this matter, because well, if a constitutional provision comes up, which is uh, not plain and straightforward, requiring interpretation, Article 130, which gives the interpret, in, interpretive, uh, interpretative power and the enforcement power to the exclusive to the Supreme Court, uh, says that if a question relating to those issues arises in the court lower than the Supreme Court, the lower court shall stay the proceedings and refer the matter to the Supreme Court for determination, and then shall dispose of the matter before them in accordance with the interpretation. So, um, once Article 99 has entrusted vacation of this matter to the High Court, uh, the Supreme Court to say you don't just go straight at first instance to invoke it in a matter like this, but it has referred uh, jurisdiction if an issue of interpretation related to a constitution arises. So, to me, uh, uh, that's how I see it. Uh, I see, and the the speaker in reading his decision on Thursday was quite clear in, in indicating that he was not seeking to interpret 97 1 G and H but was applying that particular article and the details of it um, if violated and as you have just, just made reference to the fact that the, the details of 97 is clear and is applicable automatically but what we're dealing with right now the Supreme Court has been asked to, as it were, come in because Alexander Fenyo Markin makes the argument that the, the Speaker sought to interpret the Constitution. And so the Supreme Court then takes a decision that the execution of the Speaker's decision as communicated to declare these seats vacant should be stayed. It should not be executed. Th that's what's happening right now. Yeah, but in relation to what did he, I mean, assuming he interpreted, um, in relation to what did he interpret, a vacancy in Parliament, vacancy in Parliament matter is given to the High Court under Article 99, as I read to you, not to the Supreme Court. That's why I'm saying that, you see, Article 130 gives original jurisdiction of interpretation and effort, original. But where it has given jurisdiction relation to another particular matter, to a particular court, that court doesn't lose its jurisdiction. What happens is if an interpretation issue arises, Article 130 plus 2 itself says 
the lower court shall stay the proceedings and refer the question of interpretation to the Supreme Court for determination. And then they will determine the case in accordance with that interpretation. So in such a situation, the Supreme Court has referral jurisdiction, not original jurisdiction. Referral jurisdiction cannot be the same as original jurisdiction. And uh, uh, and uh, just William, I'm about if 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 you could put the, the 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 camera back on, I think we lost you briefly. But then again, the, there's been that reaction to if you can hear me now, the decision by the Supreme Court as communicated uh, on Friday to have the speaker's the decision, the execution of the speaker's decision stayed. And from your legal lenses. Is this one that the Supreme Court can do, as it were? Because that's one of the issues that has come up for discussion now, whether the Supreme Court indeed did right in having or indicating that the Speaker's decision should be stayed. From where you sit, is that right? Well, I've said on some other platform that uh, strictly in law, I mean, I don't see how they could have other state of execution. Uh, state of execution relates to execution uh, of um, court judgments using court processes for enforcing court judgments. That's what execution uh, in relation to court judgment means. Uh, so we don't apply this to some non-court situation. Uh, it's just not applicable. Nonetheless, um, over the years, the courts have uh, tried to do substantial justice. Uh, it's not like uh, the old and common law days when uh, uh, you had to uh, strictly frame <laughs> your action or relief. Uh, otherwise, uh, it would be pernicious. Uh, try to do substantial justice. So if somebody comes for a stay of execution and you see that, oh, I mean, it's just nomenclature, but uh, if you had asked for injunction or uh, some other uh, uh, suitable order, we, could, uh, we shouldn't uh, throw the person out because of that technical choice. Mm. Uh, so you look at the substance of the thing. Uh, even the call is stay of execution, but all the intent is suspend or I mean suspend the uh, the force of your ruling, the effect of it. Uh, uh, that is the substance. An injunction can achieve that. Uh, so uh, I think that. Uh, the emotive, uh, you know, clinging to epithets. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not that you're not there. That's not very helpful at all. Yeah. So then in substance, I think that's what the court did. Uh, I see. To... I see. And, and, and before I let you go, and, and uh, no, we, we're going to have an extensive conversation on this matter subsequently, but I just want to find out from you, there are many because of this particular instance and a few others in the past that have expressed concern about the workings of the Supreme Court currently. Now, having served at the Apex Court for this long, do these concerns raised have merit? And as you have heard, do they raise any eyebrows for you or these concerns being expressed about the workings of the Supreme Court is much ado about nothing? Uh, if it, it raises eyebrows, yes, my eyebrows to be raised. <laughs> you know, uh, as a, uh, a common uh, matter of uh, human uh, inclination. Uh, but that's not a matter of law for me. Uh, I... Uh, cannot know uh, whether they've done so only in respect of this one or 
in respect of some other matters. Uh, all I can say is that um, um, uh, courts do exp expedite uh, cases we they think uh, of um, uh, very pressing importance. Uh, so these things can happen. However, if, you know, in the terrain of uh, constitutional adjudication, uh, parity of treatment is not given, uh, in, in, uh, parity of uh, circumstances, then you can 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 complain. But I am not seized with uh, uh, the whole gamut of uh, constitutional cases before the Supreme Court and how they have <laughs> uh, handled them. So it's difficult to uh, to say whether this one was uh, uh, exceptionally expedited in, uh, when others. That's matters of fact, a uh, matter of fact. Maybe you, the journalist, can know if you, you can go to the Supreme Court and find out the number of actions that have come before them recently and uh, uh, in terms of uh, their pressing character and how they've treated them. I sit to you in my house here. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and rightly so. And I want to thank you so much for staying up uh, to join us here on Ghana Tonight. Justice William Atuguba, retired former Justice of the Supreme Court of the Republic of Ghana. Thank you for your thoughts on this matter on Ghana Tonight. Appreciate you, as always, for joining us. This is your Election Command Center.